Hey everyone! My name is Sarah Johnson and I'm a pediatric occupational therapist and part of the infant development team here at Emerge Pediatric Therapy. I'm here today to talk to you about my favorite spoons for introducing purees to your infant and why they're some of my favorites. The first spoon that I absolutely love for infant feeding is this munchkin spoon. The reason why I like this spoon is the bowl of the spoon is shallow. The reason why the bowl of the spoon is so important is because it encourages lip closure and tongue cupping. So a shallower bowl means that the infant can go onto the spoon, they can use their lips to pull all of the puree off and practice clearing the spoon. The other thing we look for is for spoons to not have a lip on the side. When there's a lip on the side of the spoon, it's harder for infants to get all of the puree off and practice that good lip closure. I also like that this spoon has a little bit of a longer handle. It's still something infants can self-feed with, but the longer handle also allows parents to easily offer a bite to the infant. And the longer spoon means that the infant can see the spoon coming and prepare themselves for the bite. The next spoon that I really like are these easy peasy spoons. For a lot of the same reason as the last spoon. So we see this shallow bowl again, there's no lip on the side of the spoon, but the other thing I like about this spoon is that the handle is perfect for baby's hands. When we're looking at spoons that babies are gonna self-feed with, we want to look for a handle that's short and fat because that's easier for baby to hold on to. So these are a great option for babies to work on self-feeding. Parents can still offer a bite with these spoons, but these are great for infants' early development of their hand muscles. Another spoon that I really like are these goo tensils. And these come in two different stages. So the first spoon has ridges, but not openings. I really love this one for dipping in purees. Sometimes what we can see is when we're using this spoon, because it's so smooth, the purees can fall off and that can be a little bit frustrating as infant is practicing getting it to their mouth. But the ridges on this spoon will hold the puree on a little bit easier and they might have a little bit more success bringing it to their mouth. The second stage has more openings. I really love this one for more textured foods or mashed foods because it keeps the textured and mashed foods on a lot better. Sometimes we see the same thing with the mashed foods that on these smoother spoons, they could fall right off. But with these ridges, it gets all in there and it's a little bit easier for infants to bring to their mouth. The last spoon that I really like are these grabby spoons. And I love that they have both a spoon and a fork option. Um, the thing that I love about this spoon is again, the handle is great for little hands and for infants bringing to their mouth independently. Sometimes this spoon piece is a little bit big for the infant's mouth. It really just depends on their age and size and how, that, um, how their oral motor skills are developing. I don't love this bite guard on the spoon. And the reason why I don't love that is because what we're trying to work on with feeding development as well is moving the gag reflex back. So this prevents the spoon from going too far back in their mouth, which is not working on that gag reflex. So anytime I have these spoons, I recommend having one that's a little bit longer or doesn't have the bite guard or using those in combination with one of the chew tubes. I absolutely love chew tubes for early offering of food, especially purees, because we can practice dipping it in and then infants can independently bring it to their mouth and practice moving purees around. Long chew tubes like this are great for integrating the gag reflex because as the infant moves it around, their tongue follows, they put it farther back in their mouth. Over time, that's gonna decrease their gag reflex and then we won't see it quite as much when they start solids. So these can be a wonderful option. I love that there's different texture on both sides. There's also a bigger opening, so you can dip it in. Some puree will go inside and infants can use their tongue to try and get it out. So this can be a fantastic option as well. I will put the names and links for all of these items in the description section. Um, so hopefully this helped a little bit with choosing what utensil to start purees with for your infant. If you have any questions regarding infant feeding, please feel free to reach out and we'd be more than happy to help. Thanks so much.